Welcome to this tutorial where we're going to go over one of my favorite upcoming players, uh, Francis Tiafo. My name is Kevin Garlington with Essential Tennis, and today you're going to learn tips on how you can take some of the fundamentals that up and coming stars like Francis Tiafo are using to have a very huge impact on the game with his forehand. So let's get started. Um, in this clip I have here of Francis, what we're going to do is just start with the basic things of what's really important. And as I go through it, I'm going to point out what are the fundamental things that you can take and implement in your game. So backing up here, we want to start with what I like to call, well, not like to call, but is the ready position and why this is so important that you have a solid fundamental ready position, meaning that as you see Francis, he's got his uh, knees slightly bent, a good wide stance. He has the racket up uh, above his wrist. Now, when we go into talking about the grips, I want you just to notice how he has a semi-Western grip or a, maybe a little bit harder semi-Western grip that you'll see as he goes through his stroke. So the very first move we want to really watch Tiafa do is the unit turn. And this is pretty much the first move you're going to see any professional player use. Um, so really key on, on this move is something you can work on at home. Generally, with the unit turn, you're going to see a lot of professional players use their left hand to push the racket back. So as we see him, he's starting to use his left arm to push the racket back. And he has a somewhat early release where you start to see the racket release from the left arm. The keys in his unit turn that you're going to see is you start to see his shoulders facing towards the camera. And in this position, his, his first move to get the racket in his um, next uh, swing path, which is the racket take back. Now, Tiafo has a little bit, what I want to call a little bit more stylistic forehand. As you can see with his take back, it's a little bit higher and he has the racket slightly inverted. Now, with this stylistic take back, he's able to uh, have a lot of relaxation and really get the racket moving because as he's taking the racket back and the racket's in this inverted position, you're going to really see as he takes the racket down and gets into the pulling position that he's really able to unleash a lot of racket at speed just because of the amount of ra relaxation that he has. Now, as a key, think about it. How much relaxation do you have as you're getting ready to hit the ball. If you find yourself being very tense and stiff, then you're gonna lock off or pull out a lot of the acceleration and power that you can have when swinging. So the next phase is he's gonna start to go to his racket drop and his coil. As we start running this through, you're gonna really see him coil up and you start to see where his shoulders are slightly facing away from his hips, meaning that his hips are facing one direction and his shoulders are slightly facing another. It's pushing against, creating more opportunity for him to generate more pace and racket acceleration from the uncoiling of his hips. So again, you can see how the racket's really, if you see it right here, really inverted, where the racket face is in this backwards position, putting his wrists into almost I want to say almost like a, a, a snapping or uncoiling position, almost like if you're going to crack a whip, how this racket is going to be and allow his hand to lag. Now, this is a really important thing where you see Tiafo put his uh, body in the position where he's going to start pulling the racket and you're going to start to see this lagging position from his wrist. So as we watch, you can really see how his hand is going to relax and allow that as he starts to dropping uh, starts dropping his racket, he puts his racket in a slot position where the butt of the racket is able to pull forward, allowing him to generate a lot of racket acceleration. One other thing we want to look at is his stance right here. He has a semi-open stance, which again creates a coil effect in his entire body, allowing him to use his stance to generate the power from the ground up through the hips to the shoulders and to this pulling position where he's going to start really uncoiling the racket, allowing his racket head to accelerate. So as we see this, as he's going to start speeding up here, you can really see how even in this one or two frames, how the racket is going to get pulled into this lag position where he's pulling the racket and the racket almost whips back because of the amount of relaxation in his wrist and in his arm. So as a key to you, think about, again, how much tension are you carrying in your hand and your arm as you're getting ready to swing the racket? If you find yourself with a lot of tension and a lot of stiffness, then you're going to, again, lock off the power. This is how he's creating so much racketed speed. Now, 
The next position uh, he's going to get to is contact. And I like to call this sometimes the piano player position. So if you've ever been, uh, if you've ever seen someone play the piano, or almost like a typing position, uh, where Tiafo's arms are in this position, he is striking the ball in this position. So the same kind of length that you have that if you were typing or playing at the piano with a bent arm, this is the same equivalent that he has while he's making contact. As you can see, his elbow isn't completely straight, uh, kind of a la a Roger Federer or some players that you see have a straight arm at contact. This is uh, still a stylistic thing. There's not a fundamental wrong or right way of having your elbow straight or having it bent. Tiafo shows us that you can have it bent and still have a great forehand. Uh, the next thing you're going to really see as Tiafo uh, starts unleashing his racket through the ball is that you see this upward action. Pretty much from these two frames, you can see right before contact to him making contact, how his racket's lifting and uh, on an upward trajectory through the ball. And as he does this, it's generating a lot of a spin. Now, the spin is now also being driven through the ball because you can now see a little bit of his extension of the racket. And this is so important that you see how he has two uh, or these two elements working together. It's not just driving through the ball and it's not just brushing up on the ball, but it's brushing and driving. So creating what I call that heavy ball. If you ever hit with a pro or if you ever had the sensation of hitting with someone who has a lot of spin but penetration through the ball, the ball tends to jump but jump at you and has a lot of force. And this is what makes his ball so uh, potent and so much of a weapon that he can use to put himself in a great position uh, to win points. Next thing you're going to start seeing the follow through. On the follow through, you do see him wrap around a little bit more. You might see a little bit more tension that he's kind of managing that racket, but in overall, it's a relaxation phase that he allows his racket and his body to finish uncoiling. So going over some of the really key markers that we're going through that you can really incorporate in your swing is understanding having a great unit turn. That unit turn sets you up for getting the racket into this pulling position. As you take that racket back, making sure that you have a lot of relaxation, that you're not clutching the racket, you're not cutting off the power that you can generate. Also the uh, stance you use. In this next video, you're gonna watch how he's gonna use the same elements but he's gonna be moving forward, hitting the ball at the same time, and you're gonna see these exact same elements reoccur. So as he's moving forward, you really see him using his uh, left arm to push the racket back a little bit, and then he again has that racket in this nice kind of flip position where he's gonna use it to generate a lot of racketed speed from the relaxation and the pulling that he's gonna have on the racket. Now, what I wanna draw your attention to in this portion of this video is his stance. It's much more open as he uses his outside leg to load and create a much bigger coil. So as you can see, his hips are facing almost towards the net, and then you can see his shoulders facing towards the camera, creating a lot more of a coil, which he can then use to unleash and create a lot of racketed speed through the ball. Again, you can see this lag position, great elbow position as he extends through the ball and has this follow through as he's making his way to net. So, Make sure you're incorporating these things into your forehand so you can have a great, phenomenal forehand like Francis Tiafo. If you want more or a step-by-step -step system for uh, learning how to hit your forehand, make sure you go to forehandactionplan.com and also make sure you subscribe to our channel because we're going to have a lot of great videos explaining how you can improve your tennis game.